Have you ever wondered what it would be like if you mixed Lord of the Rings with a bunch of fairies and a purple headed beast that we all know and love? Watch this video and you'll find out. Yes, one of my favourite trilogies in the vast sea of video games and series themselves. This game is more than just a set of games that tie into each other. No, this here is a beautiful fantasy world of amazing voice actors and a redemption that held itself together for three games. But where do we start? From the beginning, you may ask. <laughs> Get it? Because how do you like what I did there? No? Oh, okay, okay. The Legend of Sparrow, A New Beginning, sets the story in stone with the world populated by dragons and various fantasy creatures. In this series, Sparrow, voiced by Elijah Wood, is a young dragon who hails from a line of rare purple dragons who are born only once every 10 generations. It is prophesied to direct the fate of an era at that too. While still an egg, Sparrow came under the threat of the Dark Master named Malifor, who is voiced, surprisingly, by Mark Hamill. Yes, Spyro. It's not as simple as that. It's true the prophecies spoke of the purple dragon destined to put his stamp on this age. But the prophecies didn't foretell the devastation that surrounds us now. Maybe you're right, but I'm willing to try. I want to take the first step. You're actually going to go along with this lunatic? Very well then. We'll go. You deserve to see your beginning before it all ends. Anyway, Malifor and Mark Hamill Quack. sought out to prevent the prophecies from coming true. Luckily, Spyro's egg was saved by one of the four guardians, Ignatus. This guy here was also voiced by Gary Oldman. Spyro was tossed into a river and, well, Ignatus only hoped for the best for this purple little beast. He was then found by two dragonflies and was raised by them and their son, Sparks, voiced by David Spade. Yeah, you, you were a, a big help, Sparks, no doubt about it. But just for the record, a lot of weird stuff does come out of that little mouth of yours. And what the heck is that supposed to mean? You know, I don't need this. I could have stayed with the llama people, whatever, where I was appreciated, but no. No, I decided to help the poor, helpless dragons rid the world of evil. What a mistake that was, because I get no thanks. No respect, no love, no credit. My goodness. And I thought Voltaire talked a lot. The game was developed by Chrome Studios, who actually pitched a different take on Crash Bandicoot to begin with. At some point during the pitch, Spyro was mentioned as a playable character, but in his adult form. While this game was being developed, Michael Graham and Christopher Wilson, who were the two producers at Vivendi Universal, pulled something onto something else. This something would eventually become The Legend of Spyro, A New Beginning. Chrome Studios working on the Crash Bandicoot game was a huge audition for the new Spyro title, and Vivendi liked what they had done. So at that, a deal was struck to bring the team over to the Spyro project and begin to work on Spyro 06. Producer John Welsh stated that Chrome Studios worked really hard to make this new game a really fantastic looking game. Many of the previous Spyro games had a softer tone and palette that they wanted to move on from there. 
Having Spyro as a new beginning meant that they could explore ways of developing the art style and look into something that represented a mature way of gaming and its environment while taking full advantage of the new technology. The combat to this game consisted of an action based platformer where dozens of enemies would come at you and you can either physically attack them or use what they called in this game an element attacks. Now as a purple dragon you were able to harness the power of all four elements instead of just one. To put it simply, Ice Earth Fire Zappy Zap My grandmother used to tell me stories about the old days, a time of peace, when the purple dragon balance between the Ice. tribes, Earth Kingdom, Fire Nation, and Zappy Zap but that all changed when the Malifor attacked. Only Purple Dragon mastered all four elements. Only he could stop the ruthless the Dark Army. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. But I believe Spyro can save the world. The other main villain in this game you'll encounter many times is Cinder, a massive black dragon who helped Malifor destroy many dragons in the raging wars and continued to do so. Later once you harness all your powers, you fight Cinder, Malifor is locked up trying to escape if I forgot to mention, and you battle her with the true element dragon breath, which is also only used by purple dragons. Once you defeated her, you lose all your powers and find out that Cinder is actually a small dragon the same age as Spyro, who was corrupted and taken when she was an egg. The game has so many finer details that really pulls this sense of new adventure and gave life to the series, but where do we go from there? Well done, young dragon. Thanks, Ignitus. But we still don't know what's happened to the Dark Master. No matter, Spyro. There will be time to talk of the Dark Master later. Now, it's time to be grateful for your success. The producer of Spyro franchise at the time, Don Meadows, stated that Legend of Spyro A New Beginning was never intended to be a one-off. It was always about taking Spyro franchise and reworking it. This involved the story and the development characters to be a key part of the experience and not an afterthought. Instead of being a game you just pick up, it was intended to be a series of epic movie games to, you get to play. The Legend of Spyro Eternal Night very much continues that story and developers really focused on delivering the next chapter and bringing forward the deeper themes that are part of the next chapter being an epic story. This is the reason why this game is darker in every aspect from the art style to the darker music score. Cinder, what are you doing out here? It's dangerous. You shouldn't have followed me, Spyro. That's good enough for me. Let's go. See ya. Please, don't make this harder for me than it already is. I'm just trying to understand. I'm leaving, Spyro. I don't belong here. The mood of this story is a departure from the bubblegum platform games. The level of work only expected in movie scripts was put into making the story really go somewhere and touch the audience. Having major budget restraints, the development team were forced to basically reuse assets from a new beginning and alter storyline to account for it. Chrome Studios did an amazing job with what they had to get this game to do, but in the end, they weren't really happy with it. They were actually quite disappointed. The game's mechanics truly felt that they were going backward when playing through this. Although the story had important roles to play at the end, it often dozed off into misplaced scripting and odd placements of action being made by different characters. 
At adding to all of this was a difficulty curve that wasn't needed along the way with its sloppy controls. Truly the game, although having its dark moments, really felt blank as Spyro fainted every 5 seconds to meet with a mysterious voice named the Chronicler. You run off try and save Cinder a bunch of times while literally getting beat by every character because, well, you know, let's all crank that aggro up to 11, shall we? the game, you meet a new dragon that's been in your head unlocking your abilities, the Chronicler. He writes everything about everyone's life stories in their time in his books and keeps them in the library. Chronicler tells about the future of Cinder and explains how she will turn evil again and Spyro ends up running off to find her and save her. Once you meet Cinder and the final boss, Malifor's henchman Gol, you are forced to battle him to the end. After the first phase, you fight through this broken platform and you accidentally act fall into a dark light which causes you to turn into Dark Spyro in which you beat Gull and Cinder knocks some sentence into Spyro. The world begins to crumble and everything is starting to fall away from the power of Malifor. Spyro only knows one way to get out of this and freezes both himself, Cinder and Sparks into a crystal before the game ends with a picture of the three being looked over by a cheetah from a distance. Young dragon, all our hope now lies with you. When you wake up, it will be a different world. But know this, you are not alone. You have allies. The game really fell to the wayside due to its bleak story and overwhelm copy and paste treatment. The story isn't over yet. Even in the darkest of times, there is always hope. But sometimes fear clouds our vision. Sometimes our strength gives out. And yet sometimes, when all seems lost, a light shines through the darkness. And we are reminded that even the smallest amount of courage can turn the tides of war. After countless efforts in trying with the last two games, it was time to step things up even further by creating the final chapter of the trilogy with as much wow as they could give. So Sierra producers turned away from Chrome Studios and they went with Estranger's Libelules for The Dawn of the Dragon. The development team knew that the previous game, Spyro games had a very cartoon visual style and while they had some appeal, they felt that it didn't necessarily fit the tone for the game they wanted to make. Rather than ending with the same style, they decided on immersing the players in a rich fantasy world with terrific detail and vibrant colours to give everyone a new experience. producers of the trilogy challenged and Trajez Libelulis to come up with an updated look for Spyro that felt like the same character. They wanted Spyro to be able to fly, so it was important to have broader wingspan while this new art style was a must. Now see what you've done? Let us go. 
We can help. Our warriors can handle this. Now is not the time to be stubborn. Hey, a lot of weird stuff happens when they get upset. I'd listen to them if I were you. Now this game's mechanics were amazing. Although fighting was still a little bleak, the elemental moves shined bright. With updated element attacks that could be upgraded properly and having the ultimates that really showed that they put a lot of effort into it. And it was actually a fact that once you mastered these elements, you could really see that you truly mastered the elements. This also included Cinder's moves too. Oh wait, I didn't tell you you could play her? Huh, how about that? Did you also know that she has her own elements based off of a corruption from the Dark Master? No? Huh, well what about the fact that you can play co-op in this game? Yes, this game truly upgraded multiple moments with unlockable armor, flying anywhere in the game, gorgeous stages with amazing music that truly made you feel alive, and a true sense of achievement when upgrading your dragon's attacks. the story changed from the final chapter? Well not only did we get a major upgrade in visuals, we also received a huge upgrade in character development, a mature angle perspective for Spyro and a development of both Spyro and Cinder that they carried through till the end. The story starts off from where you left off in the previous game, but the three years later where Malifor has returned and the world is blown into chaos. As an older dragon, you begin to unlock the true power of the purple dragon and push forward to face your destiny with your friends, Cinder and Sparks, by your side. Through the whole experience in this game, you find many moments where it pulls your heartstrings and gives you a sense of nervousness knowing that in the end, you have to face your destiny. Are you ready for this? I'm scared. Just stay close to me. And to end it all off, you are given one of the most amazing th songs, thanks to the amazing artists Rebecca Nebel and Gabriel Mann. It's funny enough, the ending of the trilogy was actually supposed to be a movie adaption, but was cancelled. But hey, that's okay. This trilogy was more than enough to tell us an amazing story. Yes, they truly pulled through with this, and honestly, I would go back and try it yourself if you're into the fantasy vibe with, you know, a little bit of that purple friend. And with some good voice acting as well. I mean, that was pretty good. And, you know, the, the, the story was pretty good. Actually, no, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, definitely, it was very amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Comment below how you felt with the series, and I'll see you next time. See you guys. Then I'm with you.